In this video, I'm going to show you how to compile a PowerShell script into an executable in Visual Studio Code. So what I'm using is PowerShell Pro Tools, the Visual Studio Code extension. For this video, I'm using version 5.11. Uh, once you install the PowerShell Pro Tools extension, um, you're going to have some new buttons available on your PowerShell window or PowerShell scripts. So on the top, top right here, you'll see that I have a package script as XE button. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to patch, package this simple script here. It's just a PS1 file that outputs the PS version table so that we can see what version of PowerShell we're running. So I'm going to click that package script as XE. And you can see down in the bottom here, it's executing the uh, script packaging. And it's created a default package manifest file. So if we go over to our um, file explorer here, you'll see that I have a package.ps1 PSD1 file. And that contains all the settings for our packaging system. So if this file exists, when you click this uh, package script as XE, it's going to look at that package.psd1 file and use those settings. You can also see that there's now an out folder because it actually ran the packaging. Inside the out folder, we have a script.exe, which is our packaged executable. So I can run that. And you run that. What you're going to see here is that our package executable is uh, is running uh, the desktop edition, which is Windows PowerShell. So if we just scroll up a little bit, you'll see that the PS version is 5.1. So we're running Windows PowerShell when we run the default packaging settings. Um, with PowerShell uh, Pro Tools version 5.11 or later, you can now package PowerShell 7 scripts. So if we want to package a PowerShell 7 script, what we can do is we can actually change a couple settings inside this package you want PSD1 file. First of all, we're going to set a uh, PowerShell version and we're going to set it to 7.0.0. So that is the current um, PowerShell version. And we also want to set uh, the .NET version to .NET Core App 3.1. So PowerShell um, 7 runs it as a .NET Core app and not as a .NET Framework app. So we need to change the .NET version to include or to use the same thing that PowerShell 7 expects. So I'm not sure why it's giving me this error, but um, I think that might just be the Visual Studio Code extension. But let's run the packaging again. So now if I click this package script as XE, what you're going to see here is uh, we are going to package as a uh, .NET Core app. So now when we run our script, what you'll notice is that instead of actually executing PowerShell 5.1, it's going to execute PowerShell 7. Um, and you can see here our PS version is now PowerShell 7. And um, you can include your PowerShell commandlets that run on PowerShell 7 and that kind of thing. So one thing to note is, uh, if we look at the size of this file here, what you're going to see is that this file is actually very large. So it's about 100 megabytes. Uh, the reason that is is because this file contains the entire .NET Core and PowerShell runtime. So you can move this script onto any machine or this executable onto any machine that, that you want that kind of supports the PowerShell .NET Core runtime and execute this script without actually having to install the .NET Core runtime or uh, the PowerShell um, 7 runtime, I guess. Uh, so that is pretty cool. So it's uh, completely uh, self-contained. You can see that the startup time is a little slower because it needs to extract some of that stuff, and that's just a, a .NET Core um, kind of implementation detail. So uh, the one last thing I wanted to show you is we've also added the ability to um, create experimental cross-platform executables for um, the packager. So what you can do is you can actually specify the runtime identifier. And the runtime identifier is the actual, um, pretty much the platform that this particular uh, script is going to run on. So by default, it's set to win uh, x64 if you don't specify anything. Um, runtime identifiers, uh, you can just Google that, and um, they are there are several runtime identifiers you can specify for .NET Core applications, and that's what we're doing here. So we're just saying, I want to compile this as um, an application for Linux x64. So now, if we go back to our script, and we click 
uh, package script is XE. What you're going to see here is it's going to run the same process of so packaging via the .NET Core app 3.1. Um, and if you look in our out folder, you're going to see that we have a script now without an, ex uh, an .exe extension. And that is the actual Linux executable that uh, we are going to um, run on Linux. So now, um, if I want to just look at that quick, you'll see that it's about the same size as, oops, I'll do this one. It's about the same size or a little bit bigger than the uh, script.exe that we run on Windows, but it's you know an executable that you can run on Linux. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, find this file here quick. We're going to grab that, and I'm going to go over to my Linux machine, which I've already opened in Explorer for. And um, then I'm going to copy that over there. So now I have my script sitting over there. And I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 to do this. And now you can see that I am in a bash prompt on my Linux machine. Uh, if I do an ls, you'll see that there's my script executable. The first thing that we need to do is tell Linux that we can actually execute this particular script. And now uh, it's executable. And if I just execute that script, it's going to do the same thing that it did on Windows, where it's going to extract some stuff and then run our uh, script inside Linux. So as you can see here, the PS version table in this particular environment returns PS version 7.0.0, and then the platform is Unix and the OS is Linux. So in this video, I showed you how to package um, PowerShell scripts into executables that work on both Windows and Linux.